Welcome to Zipping TikTok Band. Welcome to Zipping to Tick Band. Hi, welcome to Something to Talk About. My name is Taco, and here I'm doing one of those Let's Talk About the Differences, where I talk about a character from the Song of Ice and Fire book series, that's the Game of Thrones books, and a character from Game of Thrones, that's at a Song of Ice and Fire show. <laughs> and uh, yeah, who are we covering? Mord. Dude, I am so pumped to cover Mord. I love Mord. And I, I needed a break from those really huge characters that I, I was covering where, like, in order the cover was happening in the show, I needed, like, two to three slides. Mord's one of those one-sliders. And, yeah, not too many differences, but, I mean, Mord's great. I get to talk about Mord. That's all I care about. So, yeah, my name's Taco. If you don't know what's going on here, I rant, and I, I don't do any editing. I got these cards to uh to read and um simply read the cards you're going to be wonderful really all right i'll read the cards mord let's go so let's talk about the eerie so you kind of have to know the setting um and what the sky cells are to really understand what's going on here so the eerie is an ancient castle in the seat of house Aaron, one of the oldest lines of andal nobility Within the Vale of Aaron, it is situated in the Mountains of the Moon and uh, on a shoulder of the peak known as the Giant's Lance, several thousand feet above the valley below. The area is considered impregnable to attack during wartime or wintertime. The Aaron seek refuge uh, against the cold in the Gates of the Moon, which is in the base of the mountain. So, yeah. The Eyrie is the smallest of the great castles, um, being no larger than Magor's Holdfast, which is in the Red Keep. The castle is made of fine white stone, and the High Hall has um, two thrones made of weirwood. That's pretty cool. And a large door called the Moon Door, which is also made of weirwood. So yeah, with some weirwood stuff going on, and the stone's white. Um, yeah, there's some weirwood um, symbolism going on here, which I always found really cool about the Eerie because there's a lot of, like I said, a lot of weirwood symbolism. But at the same time, this is a Andal castle, and the Aarons are Andal, not First Men. So it's kind of cool that they kind of embraced a lot of um, of the old old way of, of old god stuff, right? Of some weirwood stuff. So... Yeah, um, where was I? The, uh, the, 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 the moon door. The sky cells, that's what we're really going to be talking about today, um, are the Eerie's infamous dungeon. They are on the shelves of the side of the mountain on a sheer cliff, left open to the cold sky with slightly sloping floors, um, yeah, to unnerve prisoners. Many prisoners that driven mad by the cold and howling wind commit um, self-death, let's say, rather than remain imprisoned. Yeah, um, it's it's a terrifying dungeon. When it comes to dungeons, the sky cells, right? So they kind of are inside the, the mountain itself onto the cliff and they're just big, open, Right, the fourth wall isn't there, right? It's just boom, 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 and death. So yeah, absolutely unnerving as they as they say. So let's cover the show version. No gold. In the television adaptation of Game of Thrones, Mord is portrayed by uh Kyrian? Kyrian uh, Birmingham. I should really practice these before I say it. Oh, I didn't say spoilers. Okay, spoilers. That's good. Spoilers about the Eerie. Uh, but yeah, there will be spoilers about the show, Mord's time in the show, which isn't too much. It's just season one. And then Mord's time in the books, which is just slightly more. So yeah, if you don't want to hear anything about the show or the books, I'm just going to talk about it straight out. I don't leave anything out. I've just converted the characters completely. So some people aren't aware of that. And yeah, here we go. Mord. Um, yeah, so Mord is a goler, I think is how they say it. It's like a jailer. I don't know why they say goler. But um, but yeah, uh, in charge of Sky Cells in the Eerie. He's in service of House Aaron. He is cruel, slow-witted. Hey, who you calling slow-witted? 
um, and follows the orders of his, quote, betters. Um, after Tyrion gets captured by Catelyn Tully and brought to the Vale, he is held in the Sky Cell. So you guys know what I'm talking about. It's after Tyrion uh, goes up north to Winterfell at the beginning of the book and then all the way to the Wall later on. And then he's on his way back. He stops at Winterfell again. And then as he's going down south, he gets stuck, stuck at um, the in at the crossroads, and Catelyn, along with other people, kind of kidnap him. They all think he's they're going to the uh, the river river run, but actually go to the Eyrie instead, and that's where her sister is, Eliza. And they're like, "Oh, Lannisters are evil and stuff." So he gets put on trial for killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, which he hasn't. He is innocent. Um, I believe at least. So, yeah, he tries to uh, bargain for his freedom with Mord. Mord responds by beating him because he has no money to pay with, saying, No, guard! as he beats him. With great difficulty, Tyrion manages to uh, bargain with Mord eventually to allow him fair hearing with Liza under the promise of a Lannister always pays his debts. Um, yeah, he goes, he like quotes a lot of Lannister. I'm sure you've heard the saying, rich as a Lannister. I'm a Lannister. Let me free. <laughs> so yeah, he buys his way out of this situation. Tyrion can manipulate the situation. Um, during his audience, um, with Liza, he demands a trial by combat, which is won in his favor by Bronn. And then he is set free. Tyrion asks for his money purse. Um, back from uh, Roger Cassell, as Tyrion turns to leave, true to his word, he tosses a gold-filled purse to uh, Mord, who looks back in delightful astonishment as Tyrion leaves. Yeah, that's it. That's all of Mord in the show, so now we're going to get to Mord in the books. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Mord is the jailer of the Sky Cells, the gooler, and um, <laughs> he beats the crap out of him until he finally gets paid to let Tyrion out to go talk to Liza. And then in order to do that, since he does that, he, Tyrion lives up to his words and he pays more. Great stuff. Um, Great season one stuff. And yeah, now we're going to get to Mord in the books, starting with his description. So yeah, Goler at the Sky Cells. Mord is a Goler of House Aaron, who oversees the upkeep and maintenance of the Sky Cells in the Eyrie. Mord is a large man who weighs 20 stone. He has rotting brown teeth. Man, that's the, that's, that sucks. I had bad teeth for a long time. I've spent a lot of money on my teeth. Man, take care of your teeth. That's all I'm going to say. It is not fun. And small, dark eyes. The left side of his face is scarred and lopsided from an axe, which cut off an ear and part of his cheek. Wow, that's brutal. Um... Mord ha uh, has a heavy white belly. Hey, me too. And thick fingers. His claws are, or clothes are poorly fit and have rank ripe smell. He wears steel toe boots and threatens prisoners with a leather strap and a lash. Okay. Mord is a brute who is found tormenting his prisoners, telling them that they are going to fall out of the sky cells to their death. Tyrion Lannister considers Mord to be an oaf who is often tricked. Yeah, his like one thing is that he gets, I wouldn't say he gets tricked. He gets, he makes a deal. He makes out on that. He doesn't get tricked. If Tyrion didn't pay him, then he would have got tricked. But <laughs> Mord made that, made that gold, <laughs> made that green. <laughs> All right, Tyrion in the Sky Cells. Mm -hmm. uh, when Tyrion Lannister is brought up to the Eyrie by Catelyn Stark, so same as the show, um, Lady Liza Aaron uh, orders Lord of Vargas Egan to have the dwarf thrown to the Sky Cells. When Mord placed Tyrion in the cell, he promised that sooner or later, Tyrion would fly. Yeah, you're going to fall, dude. That's what he said. Um, sorry, where was I? God, you, you think if this is my hobby, I'd be better at it. <laughs> um, yeah, so Mord claims Tyrion's magnificent shadow skin cloak, leaving him with a thin blanket to stay warm. One morning, the ugly and sadistic Goler Mord brings beans for Tyrion, who is one of the uh, is one in one of the sky cells. Right as always, Tyrion reaches for the plate. The oaf. 
pulls it away and holds it over the edge, like tormenting him, right? Telling Tyrion to come get it. Uh, Tyrion is unwilling to step that close to the edge, and Morda um, lets the plate fall. Oh, man, that's brutal. That's mean, dude. Um, Tyrion curses Mord, who gives him a kick before he leaves. Mord often beats Tyrion with his leather strap. Yeah, Mord's kind of a jerk, dude. Um, Tyrion decides that he must free himself, and soon... Uh, he has no chance of overpowering Mordet, so he must talk himself out. He must use his wit. So, yeah, uh, a lot of just more doing Mord stuff. All right, let's keep on cruising. So, uh, Lannister pays their debts. Tyrion hammers on the door one day, like, hey, Mord. Um, he, he is furious that Tyrion is making noise. <laughs> Tyrion, remembering not to show fear, uh, asks if Mord would like to be rich. Mord only strikes him with the leather strap. Yeah, it takes a great deal of talking about Lannister gold while getting slapped before Mord finally starts to listen. Um, Tyrion explains that although he or she relieved him of his purse, Catelyn would not rob him. Therefore, the gold is still his. Tyrion promises all of his gold to Mord in exchange for Mord telling Liza Aaron that he wishes to confess his crimes. Tyrion even goes so far to lie that his brother Jamie wears a solid gold plate armor. He's like, you know, how rich we are. I mean, Jamie's armor isn't even plated. It's solid gold, which is a lie. Um, yeah, it's just gilded. Um, but Mord would it Never know the difference, right? He doesn't know. Um, when Tyrion senses Mord's suspicion, he offers to write down the deal, and Mord begins or brings his pen and paper. Later on, Tyrion is um, shivering in his sleep when Sir Vardis Egan arrives to bring him um, to Liza. Before he leaves, Tyrion asks Mord um, for his shadow skin cloak. Yeah, Mord stole it, and. Uh, Sir, Sir Vardis Egan unhappily um, makes the goler uh, hand it over. Um, well, yeah, he makes the unhappy goler to hand it over. Okay. The high hall is filled with knights and retainers to hear the confessions. Eventually, Tyrion demands a trial by combat. All right. Um, the Purse of Gold. Tyrion gets his trial, and his champion, Baron, ends up slaying Liza's representative, Sir Vardis. Hey, thanks for helping uh, or getting more to give me my blanket. Now you did. Um, or cloak. Before uh, leaving at the Eyrie, Tyrion pays more to his Purse of Gold, as he promised. Later on, after they leave, Tyrion and Bronn have taken shelter beneath some aspens just off of the high road. Tyrion is gathering wood for the fire, and later, while they're eating a goat, I'm skipping over some stuff, they had roasted. Tyrion complains that the meat is tough, but says he will not complain too loudly since the Eyrie would have been, he would have had to dance um, on a press. Uh, yeah, precipice for a boiled bean. Yeah, as in he would have, like, when Mord would hold over the plate, he would have to go to try to get just beans, right? So at least he's eating. Bronn then complains that Tyrion gave him, uh, his the turnkey, Mord, the purse of gold, and that Tyrion states that a Lannister always pays his debts. Yeah. Um, he uh, kept his silver, however, after uh, giving the turnkey his purse, Tyrion told him that um, if he ever... Tires of a lady Aaron's service. He needs only to come to Castle Rock to get the rest. Yeah, man. Come hang out. Um, yeah. So we actually have a little bit more. So that's where it about ends for the show. But there's a little bit more for the book. Gold teeth. Next time we see Mord, he has capped all his teeth with gold. That's pretty That's pretty great. After uh, Lord Peter Baelish. So this is, again, spoilers, right? Uh, I already warned you guys. Um. He, Peter Baelish sends or brings Sansa to uh, um, the Vale, right? Um, originally at his fort and then eventually finds her way to the Eyrie. And then he, marry, he marries Liza uh, before they get to the Eyrie. And then once they get to the Eyrie, uh, I don't know, man. He does some creepy stuff and then Liza, Liza sees the creepy stuff. And then he pushes her out a door. It's some Peter Baelish stuff. It's some 
rather Baelish-y stuff. You know, I don't want to go on a limb here, but Peter Baelish, kind of a jerk. <laughs> I love making that joke. Um, all right. So after uh, Lord Peter Baelish kills Liza, but blames it on the singer Marillion, he has more to torture the singer um, as um, he is a prisoner in the sky cells. A servant named Fat Maddie, great name, states that Mord has removed both the pinkies and ring, ring finger, um, both the pinky and ring finger from uh, Mord's, or the singer Marillion's hand. Marillion falsely confesses to uh, Lord Nestor Royce that he killed Liza. Yeah, Mord chopped some of his fingers off. Yeesh. When um, the Aaron court descends to the gates of the moon before the onset of winter, Lord Luther Brune, who I do have a video on as well, and uh, I have a, let's talk about the difference from Marillion, by the way, helps Mord load, um, load supplies uh, into uh, buckets in the winch room. Mord is a, one of the last to leave the Erie, and he is tasked with butchering the oxen in a witch um, room before... In the winch room before he leaves. Yeah, it's easier to chop up that ox and then haul it all the way down, right? That's what he says. Okay, that's it. We'll probably get more in the next book because Elaine, uh, also known as Sansa, is still in the veil. So, yeah, when the next book comes out, there will be most likely more Mord. More Mord. What a Mord. Um, although he hasn't, as you can see, she spends a lot of time there and he's not really in too much of her stuff, but yeah. All right, let's talk about those differences. They kind of nail it in season one, which is a pretty pretty memorable performance by, all right, I'm going to say it again, uh, Kirian Birmingham. Uh, yeah, he he does a really good job. So, um, all right, let's, the main differences. So he doesn't, maybe he does have that scar on his head, but it, he's not, like, missing an ear or anything, right? At least I don't think so. Um, and he doesn't steal Tyrion's cloak. But that's a tiny change, the cloak thing. Um, uh, the biggest is we don't see him uh, later on, and he doesn't torture Merillion because, as we learned in the Merillion, what's the difference? The singer leaves the veil right away in the show, and so there's no singer to torture. And so we never get to see his gold teeth, and that's lame. Um, fun fact... Morda might be named after the fictitious executioner played by Boris Karloff in the 1939 movie Tower of London. Yeah, Boris Karloff's character is also named Mord. He's also a torturer. So that's some cool fun facts. I'm sure George did that on purpose. He likes his he likes his old Boris Karloff movies, right? He does. He likes his Universal Monster stuff. He likes his, his 30s and 40s monster movies. And Tower of London, I'm assuming, is pretty good. I've never watched it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. That was Mord and a fun, kind of a lighter character compared to some of the other really large characters I cover for Let's Talk About the Difference. So, yeah. That's all I got. Click like, subscribe, and peace.